Are you struggling with getting traffic but you can't convert it to sales or get any clients? You may be attracting the wrong people. In this video, I'm going to teach you how you can convert your traffic to sales. Hi, I'm Karma. I help entrepreneurs scale their business 10x with proven online marketing systems and strategies. I post weekly videos about marketing online and online businesses. So make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to receive the notifications on my latest videos. Today I'm going to teach you how you can attract the relevant audience and convert your traffic to sales with the content that converts. Make sure to stay until the end to learn a strategy that will help you with content ideas. I am going to walk you through my mom list framework. But before we get to that, let's talk about content. Content is one of the most important components to converting your traffic to clients. You need to create convertible content consistently. Finding content ideas is always a challenge for entrepreneurs and content creators. It's even more challenging when you need to come up with convertible content ideas. So what is convertible content? Convertible content is the content that will give value to your relevant target audience. Convert that will educate and create awareness. Convertible content also means creating a gap. When you show your target audience what they need to achieve this specific goal and explain how your services will help them or products will help them, with this, this creates the gap and they see why they need your services. Don't worry, I have a system. I know this is very challenging. So today I'm gonna share with you my framework, Mom List. This is the same framework I apply to my business. Also, this is the same framework that I share with my paid clients. In online marketing, one of the biggest challenges is the content creation process and finding content ideas. Most of the content creators uh, have different systems and strategies around finding content ideas. And today we're going to talk about um, a couple of the content idea matrix, matrix I have. And let's go ahead and look at those. So here is the service-based business content matrix I have. And the framework is called Mom List. We are going to talk about myths, objections, mistakes, limiting beliefs, inspiration, social proof, and tips. That makes Mom List. This works the best for service-based businesses. However, you can always um, use it for product-based businesses as well. So let's look at the first column, which is basically what I want to talk about. This could be, uh, these could be my content pillars. These could be the subjects that I want to talk about. Here, I have six of them. I do talk about entrepreneurship mindset. I do talk about niche finding or importance. I talk about um, target audience, branding content, and social media. So now what I can do is I can think about the mom list framework and start generating content ideas. First one, let's go with the mindset. What are some mindset myths that my audience uh, have heard or done? So one of the myths that they have about mindset is I don't need to pay for training and I can learn everything on YouTube or through free webinars. So I can make, a, make create content about this myth that, hey, um, you think that you, one of the myths is that, okay, let's go back. So let's talk about mindset and go down the framework, which is the momless framework. First, we'll, we're gonna talk about the myths. What are the myths about mindset? So my target audience 
think that they don't need to pay for training or coaching and they can learn uh, from YouTube videos or from uh, through free webinars. So I could talk about that. That's one of the ideas, content ideas I could have. Objections, what are the objections they have around mindset? And this is that they say they don't have time, they don't have money. Mistakes, what are the mistakes they're making? What are the mistakes that my target, target audience is making? And they have a fixed mindset. This is a big mistake. I can talk about growth mindset. Limiting beliefs. What are some of the limiting beliefs they have about mindset? They say they don't know enough. Inspiration could be um, that I can talk about, hey, you've been working for other people. You haven't failed. Why should you work? Why should you fail working for yourself? Right? This is this is something that had inspired me. So I can talk about my story and how I was inspired and how I changed my mindset. And I was able to go full time with my business. Social proof could be about me quitting my six figure career uh, in order to become an entrepreneur. And this can show them uh, my results, my story, and which is that is social proof already. And some of the tips I can give them could be um, Ikigai. About mindset, one of the tips I always talk about is if you find a uh, purpose of your life, um, then you can succeed forever if you turn that into a business. So let's look at niche, uh, about niche myths. That, hey, there's a myth that they say you don't need a mesh, niche, I'm sorry. Um, objections, it could be, hey, I don't know how to niche, how to find a niche. Okay. All right, so let's look at niche, about niche, what are the myths? One of them is um, some people online say that you don't need a niche um, to start an online business. I don't believe that. I could talk about that. Um, objections around niche could be that they don't know how to find a profitable niche. And the mistake, uh, one of the mistakes they're making could be that they don't have a specific niche. Uh, limiting beliefs could be um, that they think that they're gonna lose sales if they niche down. And the inspiration I can give them is um, again, I could talk about my story and how I was so clear, uh, how everything got more uh, clear. Um, and I was able to strategize so much better when I was able to niche down. Social proof, I could talk about my story or I can talk about my client's story. Um, showed them social proof from my client's results. Uh, and the tips, one of the tips um, I can give them is I can show them somehow how to find profitable, how to find a profitable niche, or I can show them the tools they can use to find a profitable niche. And again, it goes on for other topics here, other subjects. And think about this. Uh, here, there are six different subjects, and we are, we have seven uh different categories here so that makes 42 pieces of content 42 content ideas and you can always repurpose these and use them in different platforms right so you can make a blog out of one of these and you can repurpose that into a instagram post you can repurpose that into a maybe a short YouTube video. You can repurpose that into a Facebook post. You can repurpose that into a TikTok video or what, uh, whatever other uh, platforms you're using. You can repurpose this, of course, uh, for any other platform, any social media platform you have. But that gives you so many pieces of content. Think about it, if you're using 
there's already 42 of them here. If you're using them one, if you use one of them, excuse me, um, in multiple platforms, that's a lot of visibility for you. And this is the type of content that will create the gap uh, in your target audience's mind, and they will understand why they may need your services or what they're doing wrong so that they um, they come to you and ask you for help. So I hope you like this one, and I will go to the, I'll move on to the product-based business matrix here. Like I said, you can use um, both uh, for product-based businesses. You can use both for service-based businesses as well, of course, but um, I find this framework more suitable for product-based business, which is the big storm framework. And when we look at here, the categories are benefits, inspiration, guide with a theme, social proof, tips, objections, results, mistakes. So that makes big storm. And um, Big storm matrix, let's start with smart towels. I have two products here I put down. We'll just go over one of them. Um, the benefits of the smart towels. One of the things that I can talk about is that they're hypoallergenic. That is a great content. I could, you know, every mom is looking for hypoallergenic um, materials for their kids. And I could talk about inspiration. What could be an inspiration about the smart towels? That they save energy. While you are washing uh, the smart towels, they, you, you are saving water and you're saving power. Um, so that is great inspiration for those who are green. Um, next one is guide. So you can create a guide with a theme. Let's say you can talk about cotton products for your baby. And in this guide, you can put your, of course, smart towels, show them that, hey, you can make this. This makes the best baby, to baby towels because it's light, it's it's hypoallergenic, it's completely natural, blah, 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 blah. And then you can, the next item in the guide could be, uh, let's say a um, cotton bib from another, um, business, another brand. And the next thing could be um, a, like cotton clothing from another brand. Just you can sprinkle some around and make it a guide, turn this into a guide. And that way you can actually also put either backlinks to your blog or you could, um, or you could um, tag of those brands as well. So that will give you more uh, visibility and more reach as well. That's going to boost up your vis visibility and reach. So it is great to always create a guide. Uh, I mean, not always, but every now and then it is great to boost that reach. Uh, Instagram just started a guide feature. So you can always use that feature for Instagram, but you can apply basically the same idea to any other platform by creating a guide yourself. Um, either in a blog style or maybe in your post. Let's talk about social proof. What is uh, What could be a social proof for the smart towels? I could show them pictures of the towels in the closet, showing how much uh, space they're saving. I could show them the um, towels in a beach bag where it, since it saves so much space, it shows everything else fitting nicely in the beach bag versus uh, a beach bag full of regular thick towels and nothing is fitting, everything is busting out of the bag, right? So that will be social proof. That's like picture of what this towel is good for. What are some tips I can give uh, about smart towels? One of them is um, maybe moms at the beach using the beach towel as a beach wrap as well as the towel. So there are multiple ways of using these towels. I could show them um, those different versions of using these um, functions of using these towels. 
um, what are some objections that they may have about smart towels? And this could be that they think smart towels will not be soft enough or that they will not soak up enough water, which is the opposite. They soak up a lot more water than the chair towels do. So I could explain them the um, logic behind that and how it actually works. And that would basically debunk all those objections. And I could show them results again, before and after pictures of maybe a cluttered closet and after and a, and a closet after using the smart towel that is tidy and neat and they're not taking up too much space. Um, or like a gym bag, it's stuffed and full with big tear towel inside, but the smart towel is great because it's tidy and neat and there's still space for everything else in the bag. Um, next one and the last one is the mistakes. I could talk about mistakes that they're making um, around towels really, um, which could be that they're using tear towels, which are inefficient and unhealthy. So I could talk about that and why that it, they are inefficient and why are they unhealthy. So yeah, these two frameworks, I hope they helped mom list and big storm frameworks. If you want a worksheet, let me know and I'll send a link to the worksheet for you. If you have any questions, again, let me know. You can always DM me on Instagram at Karma DNA Life. And I will see you later.